Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum students. Welcome to the YouTube channel of Allied School, Salman Farsi campus. Hope you all are safe and sound. Let's start our lesson number 9, Unit 3, London. Today, we'll deal two topics, history as story, the great fire of London, and a poem, Island Man. Let's take start with history as story. This story of the great fire of London, written over 300 years after it happens. It starts after the fire had started at 2 o'clock in the morning in a baker's shop. There are seven paragraphs of this story. Meanings of difficult words have been given on screen. The words are in red color and their meanings are in green. Let's read paragraph 1. In this paragraph, we come to know that fire destroyed everything. People began to bundle their belongings into bags and to move their children out of doors. They were trying to fight the fire, but all in vain, as all they had were buckets of water. King Charles II, looking out over London, he saw clouds of black smoke and ordered the mayor to look into the matter. Paragraph 2. The mayor wanted to know who was responsible for that. People told him that foreigners did this. The baker was also called to tell about the culprit. He said there must have been arsonist operating all over the city. People starting to find the culprit. A Frenchman was knocked down for the crime of being foreign. A woman holding her apron gathered up in the front was blamed to have fireballs in her apron and set upon by a mob. She fell down senseless in an open drain and a dozen yellow chicks scattered out of her apron. Paragraph 3 At last, Lord Mayor gave permission for a fire break and the soldiers began pulling apart whole street of houses. The householder were upset to see this. But it was too late. The fire jumped their fire breaks, a surf of sparks spilling onwards to set everything alight. Paragraph 4 Down the river, the watermen had gathered every boat in the city and were busy moving out families and goods down river. It was a very horrible sight. There was black smoke everywhere, but the watermen were pitiless in demanding their fee. They demanded higher and higher sum. It was a strange sight. Tables and benches were floating on the tide. Crowd jostled at the water side for a chance to board. Children up to their knees in mud. In among them, pickpocketers were lifting a fortune in watches and silk handkerchief, an unattended bag and roll of cutlery. Paragraph 5 the goldsmith and silversmith of the city deposited their valuables in the stone walls and unattackable dungeon of ancient fortress. The booksellers of London chose St. Paul's Cathedral as a safe place for their stock. Paragraph 6. It seemed the hell had risen close to the surface of the world. The crown was too hot to walk on, and the air burnt nose, throat, and lungs. There was fire and smoke everywhere. At 8 o'clock on Tuesday night, St. Paul's 
started burning, making a bonfire of the books and pamphlets, maps and Bible. Paragraph 7 <coughs> The great fire had reached the limit of its strength. Outside London, in the parks, 100,000 people gathered, confused and homeless. With few worldly goods, they had managed to save. The king supplied them food and housed them in churches and inns. But those who had lost their homes wandered about the ruins, picking over the ashes of their houses, counting the cost. Now come to the questions. There are eight questions. Question number one, why were Londoners efforts to stop the fire ineffective? Number two, who did the baker blame for the start of the fire? Number three, how does the writer illustrate the fact that innocent people were blamed for starting the fire? Number four, which phrase in paragraph three shows that the Lord Mayor was indecisive? Number five, why was it clear that the pulling down of houses to form a fire break was done too late? Number six, how did the watermen take advantage of the desperate Londoners? Number seven, what did the goldsmith and silversmith and the booksellers of London do with their precious stocks? Number eight, how did the king help the people who had lost their homes? Answer to these questions are given on the screen. Okay, let's move on. Vocabulary part one. Use your dictionary if necessary to find the meaning of the following words. Words are culprit, mob, tashed, harpsichord, cutlery, incandescent. Meaning of these words have been given on the screen. Part 2. Write six sentences of your own, each one using one of the words A to F above. Underline the word. Okay, now make sentences of the above words. The meaning of these words have been given to you. Try to make sentences of your own. If there is some problem, you can ask me. Okay, now number three, fill in the gaps with appropriate words from the text. Number one, the fire was so intense that even the dash exploded firing great stones into the air. The fire was so intense that even the houses exploded, firing great stone into the air. B. The circus master was dash in his treatment of the dancing bears and frequently punished them severely. The circus master was pitiless in his treatment of the dancing bear. C. When the dancing bear was brought to the school to dance in the playground, the crowd of children dash one another to get a good view. <coughs> when the dancing bear was brought to the school, to dance in the playground, the crowd of children jostled one another to get a good view. D. A sudden dash caught the kite and it soared up into the sky. A sudden updraft caught the kite and it soared up into the sky. The last one is after the earthquake, the government organized the dash of those who had lost their homes in the undamaged public buildings. After the earthquake, the government organized the billeting 
of those who had lost their homes in the undamaged public buildings okay now come to the next topic that is island man this is a poem and the poet is grace nicolas she was born and brought up in guyana a country in mainland south america but which is culturally similar to a caribbean country she came to england in 1977 and wrote this poem when she was living in a part of london where she could hear the constant roar of traffic on one of its busiest ring roads the north circular the poem is morning an island man wakes up to the sound of blue surf in his head the steady breaking and vomping white sea birds and fishermen pushing out to sea the sun surfacing definitely from the east of his small emerald island he always comes back goggly goggly comes back to sense of a gray metallic soul to search of wheels to dull not circular road muffling muffling his trampled below waves island man heaves himself another london day grace nicholas that was the poem and this poem was for a caribbean island man in london who still wakes up to the sound of the sea the poem starts when the island man wakes up with the sound of sea the waves are breaking but only in his head mentally he is far away in caribbean the second stanza further elaborates this ideal image of the island life the birds the fishermen are actively working at sea the sun personified is rising from the east the direction of the new day note the personal touch here he says it's his emerald island as if he were the owner the last line of second stanza sees a repeated goggly goggly he returns to reality his mind isn't quite alert he is still between two cultures as he wakes up and the first line of the third stanza combines the two he returns from the island stands but no they are not island stand at all they are gray and metallic and seem to rise there is a surge of wheels surge being a strong movement along the north circular a major road in london which produces a dull roar the fourth stanza sees the man reluctantly pull himself out of the bed he knows he has to get on and go to work in the city perhaps even dive down that same road he hears when he wakes up each morning but in his heart he longs to return to his paradise the island of his birth okay now come to the questions there are five questions question number 1 what can island man hear as he wakes up number 2 what can island man see in his imagination as he wakes up number 3 what in reality are the sounds of the sea number 4 what in reality are the waves 
and number five, how does his day back home compare with his London day? Answer to these questions are have been given on the screen. Okay, beta. And now your homework. Write all questions and answers in your notebook and learn them by heart. That was your today's lesson. Allah Hafiz. Have a nice day.